And we're live for the Carolina Martial Arts uh, Open Post Show. We have awesome guests here, and I'm super excited to get to know them and you to get to know them. So how are you guys doing the Floyds? I, I will first address you. How are you guys doing today? Pretty good, pretty good. Good, good. OK, so I want to talk about your uh, performances, experiences, and wins at the Carolina Open. So uh, Ashley, you won the Women's Fighting Grands on stage. How did that go for you? Um, it went really well. I was just in the South, so I was glad to have a fighter there. Because a lot of times in South Carolina, there's not a lot of women fighters. So the fact that you know I had a fight, we got to fight twice on stage, two two-minute rounds, it was good. Um, the girl that I fought, actually, I've coached her against one or two of my juniors in years past. So it was, I already kind of knew who she was and knew how she fought. So it was good. And uh, it was nice getting out there, being able to fight some. Yeah. And you got to fight on stage in front of a crowd, um, which is really cool. And it was nice. How did it feel having also your students there cheering you on? Um, our, our fan base with our, with our, parents i mean the parents and students out there there was so many of them it was so loud and you know them screaming for you it's it, it's really nice uh when you get out there and you hear everybody cheering for you as as you're fighting it's it, it's really good it's different at a night show than it is during the day you know mm -hmm. are you someone that like feeds off of that energy or do you sort of like black sort of uh put it in the back burner some people are completely different um I don't really feed off of it. Terry says sometimes that I, I cut everybody off when I fight a lot of times, even, including him sometimes. Even, he says I'm hard. <laughs> sometimes um, sometimes I get the tunnel vision in the fight. And so you can hear the people out there, like the crowd's good, but I, a lot of times it doesn't affect the way I fight. I'm fighting the person in front of me, and a lot of times I zone everything else out. Got it. So Justice, you also won um, fighting grands. How did that go for you? Uh, it went good. You know, I enjoyed it. Uh, I fought against Dylan Brands. I fought him a couple of times. You know, it's always always an honor sharing the ring. Uh, I enjoyed it. It was a good fight. And so you also had your dad coaching. Um, what's it like having your dad as your father, as your coach, as your tournament coach, your instructor? I know he's sitting right there for you, so but <laughs> be as honest as you can. Um, at times, especially during the bigger tournaments or the bigger fights, you know, it can, you know, it can seem as pressure sometimes, you know, because that's the number one person, you know, that you always want to make happy or whether if, if, if it's not your dad, it's your, it's the team coach, you know, but, uh, I mean, it, it, it has its pressure at times, but he knows, he knows the right time when to be my dad and when to be my coach. So, you know, I'm always, I'm, I'm blessed to have him behind me. I feel that way sometimes too. With Mr. Terry, it's like, your husband's back there, your coach is back there, and it's a lot of pressure to listen to what he's saying, which with my fight, I'm not gonna lie, I don't know how he done with justice, but he, his his advice was what won that fight for me 100%. His, his coaching, what he told me to do, what we worked on beforehand, totally worked in the ring. So both, both, both of our fights he did. His, yeah, his was the same way. So hearing that, Terry, how, as a coach, father and husband, how did you feel at the Carolina Open? I mean, I, I was kind of calm about about the situation as far as uh, coaching them uh, as fighters, because like I said, it yeah, my coaching strategies did win their fights for them, but it's it's to me, it's in their hands to apply what I'm what I'm saying, you know. And then, mm -hmm. you know, you don't never know if the person's going. You're a fighter yourself. You don't never know what the other person's going to do, so they're anticipating that, you know. Uh, but for them to to follow the game plan like they did, you know, I mean, it was it was very impressive. You know, I hate that they feel, you know, the pressure and the nervousness about, you know, uh, but I mean, I was kind of raised in the same way with my dad. You know, my dad was coaching me back when I was a kid. and I, I knew that pressure, you know, so, uh, but no, I mean, they, they definitely, you know, earned it, earned the wins, you know, it was, it was on them. Mm -hmm. So you guys are the definition um, of a martial arts family and a successful one at that. How did give us a little bit more background on how um, you? I know um, Terry are a martial artist in, um, for many years, but also Ashley, did you get in? Were you a martial artist before you met Terry, or how did that work? Oh yeah, well it's actually a. Um, 
I call it my karate fairy tale. I actually started karate in 93. And Terry was a junior black belt instructor in my first class in 93. So we've known each other since we were kids. Um, I was just quite a few years. I'm, I'm four years younger than him. So there was a little distance in age when we were younger. But um, we started at the same school. Uh, I've trained. I taught for my instructor um, for 16 years before we opened up ours. So I had already done, you know, the after school programs and the summer camps. So I've been I've been in it, you know, just throughout life. I started when I was nine. So. Okay. Wow. So then Justice, did you have any, um, I guess, option to do martial arts? Did you want to do other sports or were you, bo were you born into this basically? Uh, all, all of that really, you know, I really didn't have a choice you now I was little, you know, uh, but uh, I played football and basketball, you know, while I was training. So, I mean, I didn't want to be like one of those students that would just take time off of karate and then come back to it whenever I felt like it. I mean, karate is a, I mean that's not that's not a, that's not a year sport that is a lifelong sport you know that that's gonna stick with me I mean until I can't do it no more you know? so when you say until you can't do it anymore do you plan on you know taking over your parents karate school um, and the empire that they've built do you want to maybe just be a martial artist and not necessarily a school owner um I think I, I think one day I would like to to, to keep this name and this empire they've built uh, they built from the ground up. I think I would like to one day try to keep it running, you know, keep keep that good name going. Okay. So speaking of um, having a lot of students, um, there were so many students at Floyd Sport Karate um, and on your team at this event. I wanted to ask you, maybe Terry, you can answer this question. What is your philosophy at your school that encourages so many students to compete? I get, yeah, I get asked that a lot, really. You know, we got, there's a lot of schools out there that have way more students than we have, but they can't get 10 students to compete. Uh -huh. so, uh, as far as, I mean, we we do have a strong family bond here with, with our students and, and the parents and stuff, you know. So, number one, that's that's got to be first. You know what I mean? I can't just make parents say, hey, spend your money in this tournament. You know whether you want to or not. I'm, I'm I'm not one of those types of people. But the bond that you create, you know, in that atmosphere, that that probably helps the most. You know, it's definitely it's definitely not about the money with us. You know, uh, I think our FSK people, you know, really un understand and respect that part of it. So, but from then, you know, in our school, you know, we make our students they they compete against each other. You know, breaking it down where they they can accept winning and losing. You know, we have we have belts here at the school that they it might be a random random weapons night and they'll they'll compete for that belt, you know, in, in their choice of weapons, you know. Uh same thing with sparring and stuff like that. Uh but I mean as far as how many people how many we probably have we probably roughly have probably 125 students in our school, you know. Mm -hmm. Uh and so literally we took half half of our school to this tournament, you know, yeah. and what's, what's really crazy is uh, the other half that didn't compete. We have some extremely talented kids, you know, that I'm still working on, you know, either uh, the parents giving the child the choice, you know, to compete or uh, the parents. you got some parents, they just, hey, I want my young and doing something other than video games, but then they don't want to. You know do the extra and they don't really get to see you know what their child is capable of you know like justice talking about he didn't have a choice if i would have gave justice the choice every time he didn't want to go to class uh he probably wouldn't be half of what he is right now you know what i mean so yeah he was born into it you know uh but I, all it is is me as a parent and as an instructor you know i i, I realized that he had it and even from an earlier age my i got two younger children that do it uh and, and now when we're going to tournaments, they, they know, hey, if we're at a tournament competing, so are you, you know? So, uh, but that's the only way we're gonna make them them grow, you know? Yeah, so how do you how do you sort of decide then what tournaments that you go to? And then in turn, because you've created that trust, that bond where they look to you to see what tournaments to go to, how do you decide uh, who you bring your uh, students to? Well, I call, we got like a, I call it like my dummy crew, my test, my test dummies, like me and us three, and I got my junior black belts that's kind of loyal with us and stuff, you know. 
uh, we'll like two years. There's about eight to ten of us that yeah. will just. We'll pick the tournament that, hmm, we think it might be good, and we'll travel, and we'll go do it this year and see how it is, see if it's a tournament that would be good for the team. And then when we come back, all of us, as, you know, a whole tell the group how the tournament was, you know, what we benefited from it, what divisions were big for our other competitors in the school, and then we put it on the list. Right. Wow, that's really interesting because when I was younger, sometimes instructors would be like, go to this tournament without them have, having ever, like, really taken such a – inventory on the goods and the bads of it and then a lot of students then turn around and say oh i had a horrible experience and then never want to compete again um yeah so that's what we that's try to we try to not happen that's why we try to <laughs> test run it and see how it is before we send the beginners and the, you know the new ones that have never done it before you want them to have a good experience mm -hmm. so in your opinion i can start with justice what makes or breaks a tournament for you um I mean, there's a, there's a variety of things, you know, like what for me, you know, kind of what makes my day or days at the tournament, you know, just having having my team there, or if it's not the whole team, it's at least having these two right here. Uh, but you know, maybe just uh, if you know the promoter really well, you know, uh, you know they, that can lead to other things. But for me, it's just having the team, you know, having support, the love, you know, just having them behind me. That's that's the main thing for me, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, it could be a small, it could be a big one, but as long as my team's there, or at least these two, I'm perfectly happy where I am. That's great. And Ashley or Terry, do you have anything in particular that makes or breaks a tournament, either as someone competing or as a coach instructor? Um, us talking about the experience of a tournament, my I like the organization. If you see like all those bigger, small, like the young kids divisions, the six years old, said, if you see them run smooth or run faster than you know, you don't want a kid to show up first tournament and sit there all day long, you know, waiting to compete. So organization is a big thing for me, especially at these bigger ones. If you see one that's running quick, that's the one I want to say, hey, this is the one you guys should go try. Then they're not sitting there all day and they get to experience, you know, the karate tournament. The competition. Mm -hmm. But that's like, that's like the, the Brian Pendles tournament, you know. Uh, my youngest son, he's sick, he just turned six, and in his – traditional division there was 32 kids in his traditional division wow you know seven, I think seven, and under. seven and under traditional uh and, and instead of them just running that one massive division which would took forever you mm -hmm. know i like the fact that they in their black belt meeting they said hey let's let's break this down even more you know which yeah i think they ended up doing like three they did they did they did two groups you know 15. like 15 to one and 17 in the other you know the fact that they did it like that to go ahead and get one group rocking and rolling to the next one. I, I like when they see the little things like that to kind of help, you know, the divisions. But I made I made a post on Facebook the other day, you know, saying, you know, it's crazy how many friends you get, you know, when you, you see you have a big competition team, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, I mean, a lot of a lot of promoters, you know, want to act like they, you know, they known you forever, you know, mm -hmm. and, uh, that that to me is all smoke, you know. I mean, I, 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 I well, I say I, but we we select, you know, kind of almost like pre-select. Like we already got six tournaments picked out for the rest of the year, you know, that we automatically know as FSK, we gonna support you. You right. know, uh, it's who you are as a promoter and what you stand for. You know, uh, what I see you doing in your daily activities and stuff like that. To me. Uh, well, just, just like Brian Pinner, you know, I mean, I have all the respect in the world for that man, you know, uh, and what he stands for. You know, I mean, he was messaging me, you know, in the middle of the night last night, you know, this is after the tournament and stuff. And uh, so, I mean, that's that's why I always, you know, I try my, my best to, to bring, we brought 60 competitors to that one, mm -hmm. you know. So, yeah. I mean, to me, it's, it's more the our relationship to the promoter. How, how are they? Are they just going to buy – you know, some they're gonna do some ribbons or cheap medals. You know, you you want them to have a good experience. You know, yeah, if if you want me to support you, you that means a, you, you want a promoter that's gonna take care of our people. Yeah, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, yeah, that's the truth. You know, yeah, and it says something that you guys pick out. How many tournaments are there in a year? A lot more than six. Um, that you guys take the time to uh, well, pick before, out. Before 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 COVID, we averaged about eighteen tournaments a year. Mm -hmm. Okay, know? yeah. That is so that, now, now that's, things are starting to pick back up, you know, 
we're trying to get at least one a month, you know, from here on out. Yeah, that's that's how it was pre-COVID. It was I would go to school one tournament a month. I'd be flying somewhere. I think one one a month. What's your opinion? One tournament a month, or do you think more is is someone someone would be able to handle? What do you, what are your thoughts on that, Justin, as a competitor? We personally were doing one big one a month, and then the other one in the month would be a more local tournament. Something for some of our beginners to go to is what we would we would average. Right. I mean, competing wise, the three of us, you know, it's a passion. We'd spend every weekend at a tournament if if we could. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily competing, but just being around the sport itself. But you, definitely a big one once a month, and, and a lot of times a small one for the the beginners. So speaking of more tournaments popping up, um, as a family and as a school, what's your next one that you'll be at? Battle. Battle. Okay. So what are your, so will you be bringing the same, I mean, battle is not, I know you guys are based in South Carolina, right? So yes, battle, battle's driving for you then, right? Yeah, we, yes. we're, we're uh, 30 minutes from Myrtle Beach. I seen where you was not too long ago. You was in North Myrtle Beach. I was, yeah. yeah. It, was, it was after um, junior year. Everybody goes to to North Myrtle. Yeah, Beach. yeah. So, so I mean, we're like thirty minutes from North Myrtle and Myrtle. You yeah, know, okay. we're like five and a half. From yeah, five, a good five hours to Atlanta. Okay. So, do you anticipate bringing uh, your whole team there? Um, and how do you sort of force, foresee or foreshadow that event going? It's sort of the biggest, the first big national tournament since. COVID. Yeah, the battle, the, I haven't, to be honest, I haven't competed in the battle since 93. Yeah, we've never actually took our team to the battle. This yeah. is one of our first, so it's going to be, it's going to be our normal, I, we're going to carry a handful of students, but as far as the, the dummy team we talked about, they're all going, yeah. all the junior black belts, all of us. All of us and stuff, you know, uh, so now I did, like my intermediates and stuff, you know, intermediate belts and above, advanced stuff, I did, did I got I think a couple of beginners, I did give the school the option to, you know, hey, I, well, tournaments are always an option. It's never like a mandatory thing, you mm -hmm. know, because i got students that's been here four or five years that have never done a tournament, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, but the battle was because um, we all know how big the battle is and how serious it is, you know. Uh, they, they have the option. You can compete if you want to even go. And so we got, we got parents. Well, we, yeah, went, they, we went to we, Florida. We had we had a set of parents and their two kids went just to support us. Just to support us, you know, so and, and, and cheer yeah. for us. You know, yeah, yeah. That, that's awesome. You know, that says something. You know, to not to just have literally supporters coming with you to events that aren't like twenty minutes away. You know, yeah. wow, that that must be really heartwarming and just like a nice reminder uh, to of what you sort of what you've built um, as a family in a martial arts school. Um, my next question, which I'm, oh my gosh, I was thinking of it while you were speaking. Um, sorry, I had to, oh my God, I've never blanked at this before. Um, but so you guys um, are going to battle and you are going to bring your, oh, this really sucks. I've never actually blanked on this. Give me like 30 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Um, That's okay. what oh, I had it's real. I like that. <laughs> I had, I do, I did have a question and I, it came back to me. So I was um, on your Facebook pages just to get a little bit more background. And I saw that you guys have big fighting, I don't want to say workshops, but there's a lot of people there. How do you organize um, things like that at your school and, you know, bringing in people like Gina um, and Sh Master Sean Elliott and things like that, collaborating with other schools? Because you know, things like seeing so many fighters in one space is just so cool, especially in this time. And you would have to have like a winter camp to get that many people. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. talk about just your collaboration and getting all, so many people in one space. Well, believe it or not, like our mat space, you know, uh, we probably only have 1,100 square foot of mat space. You know, and on top of that, there's three poles. You know, you've probably seen in the picture, there's three poles in the middle of our school also, you know, so. Yeah. Uh, We're in a small and, and, Yeah, my whole, building, my, whole, yeah my, whole, my whole building is 2,000 square feet, you know, right. so. Uh, but when we do, like, those team workouts and stuff, you know, it's, we kind of, like, pre-select, you know, like, if Gina and them comes down to work out or whatever, I know she said, hey, I'm going to bring some fighters, you know. 
we automatically know who we want to buy. You know, I don't want to bring somebody that's in there that's only been sparring for a month. Mm -hmm. You know, Gina and Mr. Sean both, they've been like, they're, they're family to us. So they've mm -hmm. been here quite a few times. We tried before COVID tried to get together every couple of months, they would come down or we've been up there to work out with them. Um, but I mean, around here, there's just South Carolina. There's not a, there's not a whole lot of what the sport karate that we have going on. There's not a whole lot of that here. No different than, you know, Natalie, Natalie's here once a week, at least once a week with us. You know, she's part of the family now. We just tried to kind of band together because there's just not a whole lot here. Yeah, I did see actually Natalie's in the comment section. She, she dropped you a heart and a fire emoji. Uh, so she's watching. Um, but yeah, you're right. It's definitely hard. Um, you know, you would think, I know there's so many fighters in Florida. It's ridiculous how many fighters are in Florida and how many talented fighters are in Florida. But then you sort of, there's this middle area where, also, I would have to drive three hours to um, Master Sean Elliott's school, Ajima's school. And it's just very hard to find these hubs. But you seem to have created that where you can uh, pull in different fighters like Natalie Allen. Oh, Robbie just commented a bunch of hearts too. Um, yeah. But yeah, so that's that's really great. And you know, if I ever um, am able to come down, I would love to train with you guys because I'm in North Carolina. So. Yeah, you got, yeah. You, got, uh, you got a Duke monster. I do, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Um, but yeah, I'm back in New Jersey for the summer, but it was amazing talking to you guys, and I'm just really impressed with the family that you've built and that you're able to bring to tournaments like the Carolina Open. I wanted to congratulate you guys on your success, not only individually, um, but as a school and as uh, school owners and instructors. Thank you so much. Oh, and then on top of uh, Ashley, uh, Ashley got the power ring uh, at, for Brian's tournament also. Oh, nice. Uh, Is this your first power ring, Ashley? Yes, ma'am. Awesome. I'm sure you're going to have that somewhere where the rest of your trophies are, but that's really cool. Yeah, yeah she'll cool. put it with Justin's power ring. His, his collection. <laughs> Great. Great. So, well, hopefully we'll have you or someone else from your school on to the Power Chat series. Um, but thank you so much for coming on. Thank you so much thank for having you. us. Of course. All right. Thank you, everyone, for watching um, the Power Chat series. All right.